Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you guys a new feature that just came out in Unity called Cinema Machine. So what is it and how do you use it? Well, Cinema Machine is basically a way to animate your scene very simply without using much scripting or much code. So you can use this in many different ways. You can use it for your camera, you can use it for an object in your scene that you need to get from one position to another and back you can use it for rotation, scaling, all this stuff. It's basically a built-in dope sheet in Unity. So if you guys don't know what that is, it's part of Blender, another 3D program that I teach on this channel. So, what does it do and what can be done with it? Well, really quickly, I'm going to show you guys a couple things that can be done using Cinema Machine. All right, so now that you've seen those, you can go ahead and we can go ahead and get started. But before we get started, we actually need to get the new Unity version. So how do you do that? Well, go to Google, go to unity3d.com and download Unity. So 2017.1, and as you guys can see, it introduces a couple of uh, tools. Get, click Get Unity, and then click Personal Edition. But I'm going to quickly show you guys what's new in the new Unity version. As you can see here, we basically have a new timeline, which I just talked about a little bit. Cutscenes, trailers, gameplay sequences, much more than that, all that stuff. Cinema Machine. It's an advanced camera system. Super cool. Post-processing stack. Really, you don't really need to know exactly all that stuff, but it's just filters for your, uh, for your camera. So you guys can read up on this if you want to, basically what each thing is. You guys probably saw a couple clips from earlier on what each thing does. Now, in this tutorial, I'm not going to show absolutely everything. There's a lot of things that go into Cinema Machine and the timeline in general. So if you guys want to know more about all of those things, then in the comment section below, ask for them. And I'll do my best to create a tutorial on them later. Okay, so... Now that you guys know what Cinema Machine is and know what the timeline is, we can go ahead and get started. Alright, now that you've opened up your new Unity uh, project, we can go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually import our Cinema Machine asset uh, pack. So to do that, go to the asset store and just look up Cinema Machine. And go ahead and download that and import it in. Alright, so then now that this has imported, we can go ahead and get started. Now, you can go ahead and go through all of these examples. Um, they're pretty cool. Let's just open one up here. We'll go to uh, Composer. Play this. We have a virtual camera here. And it is following our cube. There we go. Following the cube, as you can see. Now, that's alright. You got free look, which is pretty simple. It's basically a free look camera for maybe your character. And you guys can go through the rest of these, but I'm just going to take all of them and put them into one. So go ahead and open up a new scene. And go ahead and create a new empty object, and we're going to call this Virtual Camera 1. So VC1. Go to your main camera. And we'll add the main component that we need, which is a Cinema Machine Brain. So this is the most important um, asset here. Alright, so that's the main one, but it still doesn't do anything. If we played this, it would do nothing. So let's create a little scene here, just so we can see what our camera is doing. And we can play this, and you can see that it does absolutely nothing. Now, how do we change that? Well, if we go to our VC1 game object that we created, we can add a new component. And there's a lot of different components here. 
So you got Cinema Machine Brain, Clear Shot Collider, External Camera, Follow Zoom, Free Look, all of these cool things. But we're going to say Cinema Machine Virtual Camera. And you can do any of these, by the way. It doesn't matter. They're just each different, so we'll go into that later. So the first thing you, that you can see here is Look At and Follow. So this is basically a way for you to follow either a player or follow a character in a cutscene in a path or on a path or however you really want it to. Um, so there is a couple of important variables here on this component. But first, in the scene view, you can see that our camera has teleported to our VC1 game object. And that's, that's, that's what we want. And let's go ahead and create a game object that this can follow. Maybe a sphere with a rigid body. There we go. And this will bounce around so we can follow it. Now... We, it's pretty simple. We just take our sphere, put it into our look at game object or transform variable here. And something goes for follow. You can do that too. But we're not going to do that. We're going to set that to none. Now, you can move this VC1 game object. And as you can see, it's always looking at our sphere now. So if we move this back and we play it, it should always look at the sphere no matter where it is. So let's say we rotated this a little bit down. That way it falls off. There we go. It starts to roll, and as you can see, our camera looks at it. Now, we can make it follow it. Now, that's not exactly what we want. We can't move it after we do that. So, if we do do follow, it's basically just going to follow our empty game, or our sphere, in, um, inside the sphere. So, it's not far away from it. It's not close to it. Now, how do we change that? Well, over here, we have a couple of different uh, sections here. Aim, body, and noise. We're going to start off with aim. So aim is basically how we aim at our target. It's pretty simple. So when we are looking at our sphere, how are we going to do it? Is it going to be a hard constraint? Is it going to be set up through the composer? And that's basically for animation. If you do set it to composer, you can really quickly just change the settings. Horizontal damping. Um, pretty much all of this stuff is... Is important if you want to have it very precise and group composer you really don't need that just hard constraint is what we'll set that up for now now body is basically when we are following the sphere or if we are following on a path an orbital transposer basically is when we play this let's look at this real quick where we follow the sphere but we're a little bit outside of it so we're going to always look at it, but we're just a little bit outside of the sphere. We're kind of orbiting it. All right. And then track dolly. This is the one we're going to use right here. Okay. So this one is track dolly is basically where we can follow a certain path while we are uh, looking at it. So you guys saw that earlier, how the, ca the camera followed a certain path while it was looking at that certain game object. Now, to do that, we need to create, yet again, another empty game object, and we're just going to call this one Path. And we'll create a new cinematic machine path. Cinema machine path right here. Alright, so this is the one of the coolest components in Unity. It's a way for you to create certain waypoints without with just by just creating one game object. So let's go ahead and click Add a Waypoint. And we can... Edit this waypoint, we can move it around. So, this is the first waypoint. So, we'll move that over here. We're going to create another one. And we'll move that one over here. And you can create as many waypoints as you think you need. And we'll get into what the waypoints uh, really do later. There we go. That's our system right here so we can go to our vc1 game object and take our path and pull it into the cinema machine path base so now it's going to follow the path as we set our position now how if we played this now it's going to follow our sphere let's rotate our cube 
take our sphere, move it up. And it's just going to look at it. It's not actually going to follow it right now. Now, why is that? Well, we need to enable auto dolly. Now, when we play this, move it to the side, move the sphere a little bit up, play this. And our camera is following our dolly or our path. It's auto, it's auto following our path. Now, what are the settings in our auto dolly? There are three settings in our auto dolly uh, variable or function. Our search radius and our steps per segment, and if it's enabled or not. We're going to check that, obviously. It's been checked. Now, steps per segment, basically, when the sphere is moving, it's basically the speed, all right? So set that to two. We can say our search radius doesn't matter. That could be set to zero. And we play this. And we're going to follow our sphere. And we move pretty quickly. So that is that. It's a pretty simple way of taking our camera and moving it from one position to another without doing much work. Now... What if we wanted to transition from one camera to another camera, not on a path, just transitioning from one camera to the other really simply? Well, we can do that also. Let's go ahead and delete our path. And our VC1 camera, we're going to take follow and we're going to disable that. And we can just move our camera out. There we go. Now let's duplicate our VC1 game object to set that to VC2 and move that somewhere in the world. Maybe over here works. Now, we can create as many different uh, empties as we want. We can make as many virtual cameras as we want. And each represents a different waypoint, all right? So if we play this now, it's going to select one waypoint, and it's not going to do anything with it. It's going to select that waypoint and ignore the other one. So how do we make it transition from one to another? Well, that is where our very important timeline comes in. So if we go over to our timeline panel, we can create a new empty game object, and we're just going to call this playable director. And we can add a playable director component to this empty game object. Now, we have a playable asset here. So first, we can just go over here, timeline. And to begin a new timeline sequence, we just need to create a director component. So let's just click create, and that'll create it. Automatically, as you can see, it just automatically set everything up for me. Now, let's delete the current component that was in our timeline and drag our camera in. Now, we're going to create a new cinema machine track with that camera. And you may say, well, now it works. Well, not just yet. We need to do two more things. We need to add two cinema, sh sh cinema machine shot clips. All right, so we can add two of those. And each one of these needs to be set to our virtual camera. So virtual camera one, and our next one, virtual camera two, and we transition from one to another. But it's not very smooth, so how do we make this a very smooth transition? Well, we can drag our VC2 timeline component over here. We can drag that over, and as you can see, it creates a fade. So it fades from one to another. Pretty simple. There we go. So that's how you do it without a path. Now, you can do a bunch of other stuff with this, like uh, our field of view and stuff like that, but we won't change any of that right now. You can also animate your aim. So if we change this to composer, our aim, we can change this from like dead zone, horizontal damping, our track offset, all of that. Doesn't really matter. And then we can transition from one do the next. There we go. So we can transition our aim and the way we are looking. Now, the next component on our cinema machine shot here, or our cinema machine uh, virtual camera, is noise. So what is noise? Basically, when you're holding a camera and it's shaking, that's noise. So we can go ahead and create that basic multi-channel purlin. And go into our, our timeline here. And we can see... If we go to noise, amplitude, frequency, all that stuff, noise settings, let's create an asset for that. 
and that is set. So this should this should create a awesome noise effect like we're holding a camera. So position one, amplitude, frequency, just bump that up, and position two. Bump all this, uh, all this stuff up. There we go. And now, when we play this, we are going crazy. It's definitely noisy. Um, so we can change our amplitude and our frequency just so it's a little bit less. Change this to zero. And we're still going to go crazy. So amplitude one 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 and zero zero zero. There we go. So now we're definitely very noisy. We can change this to uh, to be less, but you guys get the idea. If you guys want some more advanced tutorials on Cinema Machine, just ask in the comments and I will get to that. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.